Ladies and gentlemen, the national championship team, the University of Hawaii Rainbow Wahine Volleyball Team. <laughs> Let's go over to you first of all. What happened in those last couple of points? You know, I can't really remember. I, I'm not looking at the screen right now, so I don't remember the last few points. I looked, I watched the game all the way up until we were ahead like 12 9 or something. And so, Billy, I, I apologize, but obviously we won and it was uh, just ecstatic and people were going nuts because when you're down 0 2, you really don't think you're going to uh, come back, maybe. Uh, but uh, when you're down 0 2, it, it's tough to come back. And, um, and then in the, in the third game, we had a little scare because they tied it up at 13 all. And I thought, oh boy, here we go. And we managed to survive game three. And then we pretty much handled game four. But, you know, when you come back from 0 2, it's just unbelievable. And to beat SC after they had beaten us last year, the previous year. And, and uh, they're starting three freshmen. I mean, they could have made a run of maybe six or eight in a row. And nobody in the country wanted SC to win that many in a row. So, uh, it made it even sweeter to beat SC and Chuck. Um, you know, Chuck's a great coach, but it would have been too much to lose again to them. So anyway, I, it, it was just, uh, I mean, I'm hugging Melody Tolk. I mean, <laughs> come on. <laughs> there were a lot of hugs. There was a lot of cheering out there. Let's go to Dietrich Collins Parker. Um, match was two to two. What happened? There was an extended break and, and you don't see that in the video. And both teams went into the locker rooms. What happened in there? Boy, that's a better question for Dave because I don't think we ever really knew what was going on. It was such a long break. And, and in the video we saw, we didn't even get to see how long it took. Um, I do remember that there was a question about the scoring. I think the scorekeepers had a different thing than, than what um, Wink the up rep had. And then they went back and gave us a point and took a point away. But I have no idea why or what happened. I sure couldn't tell by watching the game again over. And I've watched it several times. Leon, what do you remember? Leon, Leon what do you remember? From just that point or from the game? Uh, at that point, your you're, time match is tied to the two. You're in the locker room. What, can you, do you have any memories of that? I'd like to say I do, but <laughs> it's probably like Dave always did. I mean, he went in the corner, he was quiet for a while, and then came back and, <laughs> you know, I mean, this team was, uh, what I remember the most is just this team pulling together. That's, that's what I remember the most. I remember sitting on the side and um, praying with Dietra is what I remember the most. Like, Dietra was like, Please let us win. Please let us win. <laughs> That's what I remember the most. Corey, do you have any memories of the, being in the locker room at that time? Well, well, yeah. I mean, I think at that point, you know, it's two to two. There's really nothing more that the coaches could do or say to get us through game five. And so basically, in my mind, what I remember is just a lot of just quiet time. We all kind of w was in our own thoughts and just, you know, relaxing and taking a breather and that's what I remember about that. So, you know. So you get out onto the court, you start up that last game. What did that feel like? Did you feel like at the beginning you had it? Another game, just do our business, go about our business, you know? Um, I don't know, anyone else have a say on that, the last game? Lisa, talk about a couple of the points, last points on the game from your perspective. Well, I think the momentum was definitely on our side and they kept, they just kept coming back at us and, and they had some, some unforced errors that really were to our benefit actually. And I think the tenacity of this team was just the key. It was like, there was no way any of us was going to leave that gym, even down O2 and lose to USC period in our minds. I mean, they were bigger, stronger, more physical man for man, hands down in my personal opinion. And in watching the replay, I noticed that the commentators, you know, the mainland commentators, were not very generous to us at all. And they were a little bit like, oh, I can't believe they did that, or they kind of messed up, or and everything was focused on the other side of the net. Even though we were playing and we didn't, didn't hear that, when I watched the replay and listened to what they're saying, 
I want to say, ha, 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 we won. Like, nothing was going to, nothing was going to allow them, meaning USC, and the crowd, when you look at the span, the crowd, they were all, it seemed like all for us. And we just felt like we had to do it. Joyce, what did it feel like for you? You came back to, uh, came back after a couple of years off and, and helped. They say that some of the players have said that you helped the team with your maturity. You were the steady Eddie. You were like the mom on the team. How did that feel? And I see a lot of nods from some of the other, from your teammates. Being the, they used to call me grandma. I'm going, grandma? I'm no grandma. I'm just a couple years older than you guys are, but. Anyway, as far as being steady, I, I, you know, I try to help as, as, um, as I can, just playing steady and helping whatever I can do. And um, Dave, I, I meant to tell Dave this a while ago, but I was the only one that didn't come out that game. I was exhausted. I was so tired, but, you know, it paid off. Huh? <laughs> It paid off. Uh, so. Hey, Marcy, what do you what do you tell your family members about being on this team, uh, on the championship team? It was special. It was special. Uh, well, Chris, no, go, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> well, I was just going to say that um, it was kind of fun, you know, having my kids in Hawaii, and they would come to the alumni game every year. That, you know, only really the local girls would were able to come back to, but that was kind of fun for them to bench and kind of tell them about who used to be the, the old, where we were, and and see the bands and part of that. And that was cool. Missy, you want to jump into this? Uh, what do you tell people about, uh, especially your family members, like like you grandkids, about being you know, when you take them to volleyball, I was out there. What, what do you tell them? Well, my granddaughter is only a year old, so I won't be telling her that anytime soon. But, you know, the camaraderie, the fellowship, it's more like what we said, a sisterhood. Um, you can't add to it because that's all the roster had. And um, being one of the smallest girls, I'm shorter than Marcy, but um, it's an honor and privilege to accomplish that. So when we come from Kailokona to Oahu to watch a UH game, you know, I, I walk up to, to it and I put my hand on it with all, with all my heart because I really miss these ladies. They don't come to the big island. You all need to come out here and play some ball. But the fellowship is, is a lifetime. Dude. It's just a lifetime. Lisa knows. Ladies, we're about ready to wind up the post game here on the championship game, 1982. I'd like to go through you guys one at a time. And for some of you, this may be the first time that you're seeing each other in a long time. So I'd like to give you a little bit of time to say something either to the viewing audience or to your teammates as they are here gathered, or they may be watching for those that couldn't make it here. Corey, you're up in the upper left-hand corner. I'm going to start with you, Corey Pulaski. Um, well... I guess what I want to say to everyone is I watched I watched uh, the first game and the last game um, the other day, and I still, to this day, get emotional when I watch that game or the end of it. And, you know, to do it two years in a row was pretty pretty amazing. So, um, you know, I mean, it's that's something shared that not a lot of people can say, I mean, you know, in their lifetime that they've won a national championship, let alone two. And um, I still – I still get emotional, so it's just, it's just a wonderful feeling. You can't even put it in words. Sister Paula Kiko, over to you. Well, it was an honor playing with all of you, winning the championship with you, and getting to know all of you. And I miss singing our songs in the van. Sing <laughs> <laughs> K. Let's go over to Leanne. Hey, well, just like Corey. Uh, I get emotional watching it. I watch the game and uh, I just get emotional. I get emotional every time I see anybody win a net NC2A championship. It just brings it all back. And I'm so blessed to be part of this team. I want to thank all my teammates and Dave uh, for making me a champion. You know, uh, my husband always tells my kids, your mom's a champion. 
um, you know, so that stays with us for the rest of our lives. So just blessed. Thank you, ladies. Thanks, Dave. Joyce, over to you. Hi, ladies. Um, you know, it was such a pleasure going back to school and playing with you folks and learning, learning you guys personalities, you know, learning your personalities. And I just love all you folks. And it's just great seeing you guys again. And as far as emotions of the game, um, yeah, I sort of teared up. It was like, wow. And, and seeing me, Lisa, I mean, me, Leanne, and sister jumping around in circles like crazy ladies. It was just awesome. Thank you, ladies. Love you guys. <laughs> I'll piggyback on Corey. It's very emotional every time I see it. And I watch any NCAA championship, men's or women's, I get emotional at the, at the end just because I've, I've been there and I felt it. And it's just something that is very special that we all get to have. And this group of ladies here and coach, amazing. I, I, I love you all still to this day. And I feel like I'm still that close to you, even though we don't see each other all the time. So. Mahalo. Lisa Strand. I have to say from, uh, from just getting to Hawaii and Honolulu City Lights and the round towers with Sista and all the local girls to Japan, to all the road trips, uh, the national championships were just a sliver of it. I mean, yes, they're the greatest things, but the friendships with all the time passed between us that we can come together and still just love each other like a day hasn't went by. I think that's pretty amazing to have those types of friendships. And I'm forever grateful to each and every one of you. Um, I wanted to share a little picture that I found. I, I have it by my computer. This was one of our alumni outings. And it just goes to show you, no matter where we are, we have fun. We go out, we sing, we celebrate. And uh, I'm going to challenge you guys to get out, to come to the alumni games, just to see one another. You don't have to play, but just come. <laughs> Marcy, let's go over to you. Well, just like everybody else, it's like, it's so fun to see everybody's faces. And, you know, it's, it's like we, if we could all get together, we would just have such a blast because it's just, um, you know, just reconnecting. But it's like we've all been friends forever, even though we don't get to see each other. And, and uh, it's true. It's like it wasn't just that championship. It was four, four years together, all of us. I mean, Josie for just the last two, but seven of us were together for all four years and it's pretty amazing um it's something that you know i think we will always be proud of and it's just something that that we not everybody gets to have and i think that's super special and um i just hope that maybe we can all stay a little bit better in touch now that we've done this <laughs> that's awesome thank you um let's go over to missy missy's on us by phone well ladies it's very emotional. It may be my age, but that's quite all right. Um, when I look at you all right now, I, I go right back to the gym, mopping floors. We got to share of seven freshmen. You're kidding, right? But that's the way life is. We did our job, and at the end, the result was two championships, one uh, open USBBA, a couple Carol Kai bed races to add to that championship. So... We ladies did a lot from Kauai to Kauai to Japan. Um, thank you to uh, the boosters. Thank you to UH. Thank you for Dave um, for allowing me to be a part of the company so great in my life. Truly miss and love you all. Have a time at this time. Be safe, ladies. One more player for you, and that would be, of course, Dietrich Collins Parker. It's just such a testament to this group on what we were able to do, but what we were always able to do. And being a college coach now and being able to, I, I can't even express how special this group was for what we were able to achieve day in and day out. We didn't just achieve it on that championship day, that, that championship match, but we achieved it all the time. And I can't put into words the uniqueness um, of what we were, able to, we were able to do. And it's just a tribute to the group that Dave put together. Like Marcy said, seven of us came in together and uh, just to, to go out doing the things that we did was special. And I, I can't ever forget or 
contain the emotion that I feel for how special this group of people are, the heart and determination that you, you can't teach, um, that you go out and decide to do, and that Dave prepared us to be the best, and, and we got to walk away saying that we were. That's special. Coach, I'll ask you an additional question real quickly here. How much of the Dave stories make it to your players in the course of a year? Do, is there a lot of Dave stories that you express to them? My stories, or they have stories about me? <laughs> no, Dietrich, Dietrich Collins Park. Uh, Dietrich, uh, is oh, there a lot of Dave stories that you tell your players? <laughs> you know, um, no, because it, there's you can't you can't tell Dave stories without having the group of people that, that the story's about. I I do like the story when Dave was nervous. Boy, he would go jog around the gym. I remember being at UOP at practice and he's running and we're getting ready to practice because he's so nervous. And he was always way more nervous than we were. <laughs> or he and, would break out in hives. Break out in hives, lose hair and blame it on us. But uh, <laughs> but he's special. So um, I just think, I, I think I always wanted to achieve the level of intel volleyball intelligence that he had. So um, I didn't have that ability to go tell it to my players, but I definitely shared my experiences that I had on this team, hoping that they can just have a sliver of what we had as, as this group. So that was lucky for him. Teacher Collins Parker, thank you very much. Let's go over to Coach Dave Shoji. Dave, um, the thoughts right now? Well, I think no one's really uh, talked about this team as far as how much they complemented each other. Um, we had a really good substitution pattern. Uh, even Corey Pulaski came out. Uh, we would sub Candy Kane in for her to, to serve. Um, she was happy about it. Dietra stayed in most of the time, but she came out and Marcy came in for her. Leanne Castana would come in for Chris Pulaski. And so the whole team kind of complemented each other. And I think we got the most out of our players. Uh, Lisa Strand was, what, what can I say, undersized middle. Dietra's a 5'11 middle and actually played in the Olympics as a, a middle blocker at 5'11. Uh, Missy Yom's at five, maybe 5'6, five, banging on the outside. Um, I mean, Lisa's our uh, tallest player, right? Yeah, She's Lisa's six. the tallest. <laughs> yeah. And then to have someone like, yeah, couldn't jump. You're, you had a credit card jump, but a great anyway, arm, though, Lisa. <laughs> anyway, the team just complimented each other. Everybody wanted the best for each other. No one complained about not playing enough. Uh, oh, I'm coming out of the game. That kind of thing. There was no selfishness. That's why we were so good. This team, the majority of these players, lost five matches during their career. Unbelievable length of just greatness. And uh, um, that, that's what I remember. They just loved volleyball and they didn't care who was on the court uh, as long as we won. So that's my memory of this team and just th th such a special group. Once again, you've been listening to the players from the 1982 NCAA Women's Volleyball Championship team. And as we take a look at that, all of them on the screen, Ladies, thank you for, and you know, they still uh, come back and they give it advice and they talk story. Uh, they participate in the alumni games when they can, but we appreciate, we love all of you uh, from the University of Hawaii Athletics family and uh, our best and love to your families and to you guys and stay safe, stay healthy. Uh, Coach Dave Shoji, as always, sir, we appreciate you in everything that you continue to do uh, not only for the University of Hawaii, but for the state of Hawaii as a whole. Thank you so much for being a part of the broadcast. That does it for our post game as the University of Hawaii beats University of Southern California uh, three sets to two. On behalf of University of Hawaii, I'm Billy B. Mahalo, and thank you for joining thank us. You, Billy. Thank you, Billy. Bye. 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 Bye.